Hi there, I'm Lisa and I'm the owner of Lollipop Box Club. Today I'm creating a traditional 12 by 12 scrapbook page, but I'm going to be um, adding some mixed media techniques to the page. Um, it's something I always enjoy doing and I've had quite a few people ask me lately for different ways of using the stencil. So today I am going to be using some texture paste, some acrylic paint and I've got my watercolours as well and we're going to jazz up this page a little bit. So I've got some pieces, some bits and bobs from the Feb kit, the Happy Mail kit. I will leave a link for that below and I've also got a piece of plain white 12 by 12 cardstock. Now this is something that I use a lot and it's the base of most of my scrapbooking pages. I will also leave a link for that below because I do buy it in large quantities and um, it works out really, really cheap. So I will link up that for you below in case that's something that interests you as well. Now to start with, I'm going to be adding some paint and some paste. Um, I will be using some of the papers from the kit which I've got here also got some of the little word strips I love using these I really do and I've got some photographs as well I'd originally planned to use three black and white photos I was looking through my photos online just seeing which ones to use and I found these and to be honest the colors went really really well and um, that's what made me decide to use them. I do like it when I've got papers that match the colours of my photos. Not so much that um, it almost makes the photographs lost in the background, but just to really complement the page. And I like them here. I think they stand out really well, but match at the same time. So I've chosen these three photographs. Let's get some of the wet stuff down and then that can be left to dry. I'm taking some Kaiser colour here, this is my favourite colour, this is Spearmint and I'm going to pop this onto the back of an old gift card and as you know if you watch my videos this is my favourite way to apply paint. There you go, that can dry nicely. And I'm also going to be using some of the texture paste as well, I sell this in my shop so I will link up to that below a nice amount a stencil here and let's see let's start at the bottom here and I'm going to keep on adding to the there we go oh that's lovely texture there this does take a little bit to dry so you have to be patient um, you can use a heat gun which I love using but um, it, it's not an instant dry, if you know what I mean. Not like acrylic paint, it doesn't take that long, but this does take a little bit longer. And obviously the more you plaster on, the longer it takes to dry. So um, I know obviously I'm squashing the bit down below here, but um, I'm not going for perfection. Oh, it's really stuck down. And to be honest, it adds a little bit more pattern. So I'm quite happy with that. I'm going to go with that, maybe a little bit more, make that one's side slightly higher. I'm liking that a lot and I love the fact that I've got a little bit of paint from the previous project on there so it's coloured my moulding paste slightly, as you can see. So there we have it, I'm going to leave this to dry and I will come back and carry I did on. just want to add, this is the stencil that's going in this month's kit, which is why I've been using this one. This is the only one I've got, and um, I've used it on some, for some doodling and that, but I didn't want to plaster it in moulding paste at this stage until I've had my whole delivery, and I've actually got one to play with myself. So this was, um, a sample stencil that I was also sent so I'm using this one at the moment for the triangles but you once you've received your kit will also be able to create the same effect I just wanted to let you know the page is lovely and dry now so I'm going to take a little bit of water and my beautiful watercolors and I've got quite a wide paintbrush mix up the paints a little bit and run them across. Now because the, the um, paste is so lovely and thick, it really does pick up nicely 
on the texture paste. I'm just going to keep on running this on. I want some over the paint here. I'll just bring that up for you to have a little look. And then I'm going to use my smaller brush here. Let's bring that over here. And I want to work on the pinks and the reds and really wash them over the texture paste here. Just back and forth. And I love how on some places it's lighter than the others. Let's add some more water and I'm really just letting it run over. Whoops. Let's add a little bit more to a couple. It just really works nicely on that texture paste. Let's do a little bit of pink. If you want it to be lighter in colour, add extra water. There we go. Let's add a little bit of red to that. I'm going to do the same over here. Just letting it run over the paste. Just add a bit more water. And let's add some red to that. And down here, really concentrating on those triangles there. Add some quite a lot of water to this, do a few little flicky bits that will dry nicely. And let's go a bit paler in these areas over here. Now, the water itself is actually quite a pale pink now, um, so that in itself you can also use. And um, that works quite nicely as well. It's really nice and pale. And another nice thing, where it's darker in areas like this, you can actually brush that out a little bit and use that too. And then I'll leave this to dry properly before I start adding my photos and my paper and all of that kind of thing. A lift for you to see. There we go. So I've had a little bit of a change of heart. The paint is all dry and I've ended up switching out the coloured photos for the black and one, my original thought after all. So I've taken a picture of the children and changed it into black and white and printed that off and I do like that con contrast of the coloured with the black and white. I'm noticing my hands are really red. I've just cleaned up after dinner and um, I have the water really hot when I clean the pans and um, I've noticed my hands are really, really red. Um, now, moving on from my red hands, I am going to take this piece of paper and I want to have something underneath here, underneath the photo. So I'm going to use this punch here. This is a really old EK Success punch. I use this one quite a lot. It almost seems that punches are almost old fashioned now. You, with all the silhouettes and everything else, you don't hear of people using them very much, but I'm still a big fan. Um, they're just quick and easy, and that suits me. So let's trim that off. I'm not sure how much of this I want. I might add another one, I haven't decided yet. Might even trim that there, actually. Let's see how big that is. Yeah, right, so that feels quite equal. Okay, and I was gonna trim off some of this as well into strips to put behind the photo. So I've stuck off on the scalloped edged gray piece. Little tip here, I'm going to just add sticky tape in the center of the photo. I'm going to pop this down like this. And uh, the paper I've cut, I would quite like it to come out a little bit more. So I'm going to cut it there. 
and just pop it underneath like so and then that way you don't need it in the middle because you obviously can't see it and then that way you can have longer strips coming out so I'm gonna do that again there we go do I need another one on top yeah I might actually stick that one up there I like the color I've stuck the paper in place and I've added some of the, paper, the word strips from the kit. I'm now going to do the word in quite large, you, and I'm going to do that on a separate piece of paper. So I've got a scrap piece of card and I'm just going to roughly draw the word you and with that I'm just going to overly exaggerate some of the areas here and build on that there we go and I'm going to cut that out for my page so that's my lovely big bold title I've got a white watercolor pencil which I'm going to dip in with a little bit of water and run this on some of the black I really wanted this to stand out there we go I might see if I've got some silver actually and add that to it but um, I've got a few little highlights on there I'll tell you what I have got I forgot I had these I've got these chalk markers I bought these to add to the shop and I completely forgot about them Aren't they cool? They are so nice and thick. So I'm going to add these to the shop actually and you can take a look. What I love about them, you can use them on glass as well. They work on absolutely anything. They are so Sticking cool. Sticking it on with some 3D sticky tape. Let's move that from there. And that's going on like that. Now to finish it off, I am going to add some, I do want to go over in black, but I'm going to start off in pencil, just so I get my lines right. So I'm going to draw around in pencil first. And then I'm going to go over in pen. I'm going to do one using the ruler. And then I'm going to do one freehand so it's not so straight. Now to finish it off, I'm almost done, but I am going to cut out some of these triangles just to add to my page, almost using them as little um, embellishments. This is the finished layout. I've ended up going around the black pen on the triangles that I've added and around the words. You can see the lovely texture there and the paint, how it's darker and lighter in areas and the doodly bits as well. I'm glad I went with the black and white photo. I think that goes so much better. So that is my layout. I think I'm gonna use some of these triangles actually in my planner this week. Quite like that idea give that a go I think this evening I hope you've enjoyed this if you have any questions please do ask and please enjoy your stencils um, leave me a comment down below telling me what is your favorite way to use a stencil do you like using it uh, with pens and pencils do you like using it with paint with inks with sprays with molding paste tell me how you like to use your stencil the best I'd love to know Thank you very much and I shall see you very soon. Bye.